I had so much, there was so much going on last week. And if you weren't shaken by some of the things that happened last week, um, uh, I don't know if you're breathing. So I wanted to, um, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 first. Last week was very painful for me. I, I, I've been dealing with this for the last three days. It's just so painful for me. And, um, you know, it was such a week that, um, I'll tell you one thing, it was a week that reminds you that we're living in a fallen world. And so it was painful. I want to talk to you about how to, how to deal with painful situations. And I'll, I'll get into it in just a minute. But I want to read the scriptures to begin with. And this is what 2 Timothy 3 says that, uh, but I understand this, that in the last days, there will come, there will set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. That's pain. Hard to deal with. And hard to bear. And I think last week was an example of that. Very, very hard to deal with. Very, very painful you know, watching the, the, those images, the videos on television, um, you know, two young men, you know, lost their lives in, in, in opinions that we think they probably should not have lost their lives like that. Uh, and then we have five police officers lose their lives in a way that, okay, that shouldn't have happened. And then we had a, another gentleman, the one who took the lives of the police officers, lost his life. Now. We used, to, we used to live in Fort Worth, in the Metroplex Dallas area, for seven years. And so we have, we have, we have friends and, and, and associates down there. And so, you know, me being a good pastor and a good brother, uh, I call some of them, check on them, and, uh, and, well, some of them. And, you know, just see what was going on. But I was shocked because one that I spoke to, are you ready for this? One that I spoke to, um, well, they're like undercover police officer. But you know, when they had that standoff, they said, you know, for six hours, they said, I don't care if you're undercover, overcover, whatever you, you are, everybody becomes a police or a, a DPD. And so they, you know, they have converged on the scene. Well, the person I know knew all five police officers that died. Knew all five of them. And so it was, it, was, it was horrific. But that was terrible. But that's not the end of it. This person also knew the sniper. Went to his high school graduation live right around the corner from them. Her and her mama was best friends. They knew each other, had keys to each other's house. So the person I know is in counseling right now. Can you, what are the chances? People you know you work with, you sacrifice, you know what, and police officers, you know, whatever you think, you, I hope you think this, you understand, they put their lives on the line every day. Yeah. And so they, you know, they're, they're the camaraderie. And so, so she, she's mourning her fellow officers. And they find out when they, they put the name up, they're like, oh my God. We did Bible study in there. The boy, the boy grew up in the things of God. His granddaddy was a preacher, is a preacher. It's a, she's like, what the? Everybody say pain. pain. And so, you know, obviously it was painful for us to, to see that kind of thing, but it's painful for them. And so, you know, you, 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 you offer prayers and you, you deal with that. But this world, this was a, not just this, but this, this is what's in front of us now. There'll be something new, uh, hopefully not like that, but it'll be something different in a couple of weeks, something new. It's a reminder that we live in a world that's not getting better. Pastor Friendly been saying this for a long time. See, and, and sometimes we act like we got a thousand more years to go, and then something happens, something's going to happen. It's all going to smooth over and get better. It's not getting better. 
I said, it's not getting better. And, and, and so uh, obviously a lot of things raced through my mind, like this boy was in church, raised in church. What happened? Sometimes pain. Now, I don't know what kind of pain he's. I'm, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And they're trying to figure it out. But sometimes pain can push you to the edge. All of us are going to have to deal with, with pain some, on some level. It may be, it may be uh, I don't know, it may be, you know, if, if you live long enough, you may have some illness or deal with somebody with illness, have to take care of somebody with illness. That's going to happen. Children pain, mar uh, marital pain, uh, financial pain, uh, just I don't even know anymore. Pain, is kind of, and pain will push you to the edge if you don't know how to deal with it. Pain will push you to the point that, look, stop the world, let me get off right here. Why? Because I don't know what else to do. I guarantee you, David said the police officer, the one that shot the guy in Minnesota, he bawled like a baby. But we don't know what kind of pain that man was in. We don't know what happened. We don't know what was going through his mind. We do know this, there's a what? A devil. And what the devil would do, he's pretty clever. He's stupid, but he's clever in his manipulation, and he always creates. He always wants to create a tangible devil. You're my problem. You're my problem. You're my problem. And we, now I, I told the first crew, I'm going to tell y'all too, like I'm, I'm kind of, I was just so full, I don't, I don't, I don't have my regular flow, I'm going to just like go. And, and I stop when I'm done. Now I got, I didn't have, I had restrictions on them because y'all was coming. No, I'm not going to be before you very long. <laughs> but, but, you know, we don't, we, we don't know thing, things happen. We're the body of Christ. We don't react like everybody else. We don't, we don't react like everybody else. Yes, I get mad too. Yes, I'm mad. But I'm not trying to. Something has to, something has to click in and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I want to talk about how do you deal with pain? How do you deal with pain? I guess I guarantee you, everybody in here, everybody, everybody in here has some kind of pain or, or situation at one point or another. Or you're gonna you're gonna run into one. Or you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have some answers for some people. Because y'all gonna go to work tomorrow. Y'all working tomorrow? No? Okay, well when you go back to work, some of y'all gonna Minister Free, you really need to share that kind of stuff when, before y'all get to church. We don't need to have d disagreements in front of the reverend. I'm just messing. I'm just, aren't they a wonderful couple? Yeah, she's, she's awesome. No, but, um, but no, see, you're going to have to have answers. And see, you can't get sucked in like so many of the other world. And I'm going to tell you, and I'm, I'm going to say some stuff going to be a little tight. But it's going to be okay, and this may be your last service here, but it's going to be okay. <laughs> but it's the truth, and I, I kind of been saying it, but, but I, there's a righteous, listen, there's a righteous indignation. I, get, I, got, I was hurt, and then I got mad at a hornet. I probably shouldn't have got too mad, though, because I got stung by a bee Saturday. <laughs> got me right here, pow, in the name of Jesus. But... You and I are going to have to deal with, we have to have some answers, and not just answers. There's some light that's got to shine. There's, some, there's, so, there's a proper way to deal with stuff, and we can't be pulled into the world with all the dialogue going. Um, Psalm chapter 34, please, amplify. He says, many, just look on the screen, if you're, are they up there? Okay, good. This is just to help expedite our time. <laughs> Amplified says, many evils, I call evil pain, confront the consistently righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of how many of them? Oh. So the Bible's clear, we're going to face some painful issues. The Bible's clear. We don't want to face it, but we're going to face it. Pain is real. Pain is real, it's frustrating, it's inescapable, and it's impossible to avoid. So if that's the case, and it is, that's why God knew we would have to deal with it. So he said, I'm giving you. I'm giving you, if you flow with me, I'm giving you a way out of that to where you, you can, it's okay to be mad. It's okay to have a, a righteous indignation, but you make sure that anger is pointed toward the right thing. Right. I didn't say people. Right. Right. 
I said the right what? Thing. As believers. Now, if you're not saved, if you're not a Christian in here, you, 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 can, you, you probably don't you know, what that man talking about. But I'm talking about the saints of God. And see, we got to rise up. We're the answer. We're in the world. We're not of it, but what? We're in it to be what? Salt, to be what? To be light, to be what? To dominate the works of the devil so that people can be free and not be caught up in that kind of stuff to where this kind of stuff is happening all the time. And so I have to be, I have to, I have to flow with what, what God says is, is, is what he, uh, <laughs> flow with what he has given me to flow in. Now, I want to read a quote. Um, I want to read a quote I got from, from Bishop Jake the other day. And he said, and I thought, oh, that's so good, Bishop. Say it again. And so he said, for the tragedy that we ignore today will be on our doorstep tomorrow. And I thought about, um, I thought about back in the 80s, the late 80s, 90s, when AIDS, HIV, AIDS came. And when it was first started, it, 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 they say it started in Africa. And I remember I was watching the 700 Club, and um, and Pat Robertson was giving a commentary, and he was he was bemoaning the fact that our government was like, hmm, and that's their problem, Africa. And he said this, and he said, you know, the scripture teaches us, to whom much is given, much is required. So so whatever you have, if you if you if you like, at the top of the food chain, you ought to be serving more people. Because he said, when you have responsibility, you're more responsible. And so our government at the time kind of like backed off, like, well, that's their problem. And he said, you watch. You watch what I tell you. That problem is going to become our problem. Now, I don't know if he ever prophesied anything, but he got that one right. And so I thought about that when T.D. Jake said that, because see, a lot of people got to say stuff like, them, them, them crazy Muslims. Can I say something? I've been saying something already. However you feel about it, that's your business. But you, as a believer, we do know this. Jesus died for the For the what? Sometimes we don't act like it. When was the last time you prayed for ISIS? When was the last time you like, Lord, I pray for them crazy folks over there blowing them for filler. I'm not crazy doing it. What the last time you pray for him? Now I'm going somewhere, y'all know I'm going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, when's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you prayed? I don't I'm I don't even turn on the talk shows. I ain't listen to the talking head. I ain't listening to none of that because I don't want to hear all of that. The blame game. All I know is it's just last week, seven people gone. A lot of children don't have their father. The one guy, one, one of the police officers, daddy lived in the Eagle River. Did y'all see that? Yeah. One of the police officers said to his daddy lived in the Eagle River. They had him on TV the other night. Somebody's son is gone. The one that got blew up by the little robot. The mother of the person I know, they were tight. Somebody's son is gone. I ain't talking about, they got to answer to God. The one in the, in the vehicle, the one on the ground. Five people lost their daddy. Well, sick total, total. Jesus died for everybody. So, so we're praying for everybody. We're not picking and choosing who we're praying for. So, so that's my position. Well, I wonder, what pastor got to say? Well, I just said it. No, really. And see, and I want you to, I want to, I want to check you because I want you to think about it. I don't even check you. I want you to think about it because sometimes there's a, there's an underlying uh, prejudice, underlying, now don't get me wrong, I said it Wednesday night, the resurgence of blatant racism, it's the resurgence, it's on the rise. No question about it. On every level. Every level. But we're the children of God. How we doing? Okay, Isaiah chapter 41, Amplified, please. So I, I tell you, I got stirred up, man. I, I got madder than, than fish grease over all this because uh, 
I'm like, this, this is not right. Fish grease, you know. I know we all, I know we baking more now, grilling. But I still like me some fried chicken. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, Isaiah 41.10, we're still talking about how do we deal, how do we deal, how do we deal with painful situations. And, okay, look up, I will read that in just a minute. I'm going to amplify this up on the screen. But, but one of the things that this did for me, it, I, got, I got angry, it was sad. Then after I spoke to the people, it was, yesterday, it, it was just painful some more. And then we just did a wonderful service. And, man, our sister gone, left us here, went to heaven, be with Jesus, left us here. I'm like, oh, that ain't right. <laughs> but anyway, but we'll, we'll make it. We'll make it. But, but then I got, I got angry. And I said, friendly, Jesus gave you authority over all the works of the enemy. But then he said this. Well, I said this. This dude... It's not playing. He's not playing. And I said, we, us, the Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violent, and the violent one. We've been too passive. We've been too passive as believers. We've been too comfortable or something, just too passive. Some, we need to get angry. Anger is good when you use it all on the devil. All of it. There's a righteous indignation that says, no, this is not right. And you don't have to worry, wait for something national. You just go down, you just start going in your bedrooms in your house. Start walking in your house. This is not the will of God. This is not right. And, and let that stuff come up. Let that stuff come up. God, dog, it don't cut, but you can get close to it. And, and just say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this happening. And you, and you do what you got to do and say, never again. This is not going to take me out. This is not going to slow me down. This is not going to cause me to climb a wall again. Amen. We got to get angry about this stuff. Jesus. I said, we got to get angry about it. And I'm looking at this sucker just done killing, picking people off. What the heck going on? You can get close to saying it. Because he said, I put, I'm leaving you here. You're the light, you're the salt. Make a difference. And we're too busy just listening to sermons and posting stuff on, stealing somebody's quote and posting it. <laughs> Acting like that's your quote. You know that ain't your quote. <laughs> At least change a couple words on it. <laughs> then it's yours. That's what I do. I hear something. I'm like, oh, okay, that's good right there. Let me change the word so I ain't guilty. <laughs> okay, but listen. <laughs> Y'all funny. But I want to stir you up, but I want to give you some answers because, you know, <coughs> it's, it's time, y'all. Anyway, okay, look at Isaiah 41. Stay on script. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says this. Fear not. How you deal with painful situations. There is nothing to fear, for I am with you. Don't be looking around in terror and dismay. That means trouble, agitated, worried, nervous, easily. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will harden you to difficulty. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you. With my victorious, my what? Victoria. You ever seen in the ring, ladies and gentlemen, the new light heavyweight, bantamweight, superweight champion of the world. That's what Jesus is doing with you. I'm holding you with, your big, with the victorious right hand. Watch this. Of rightness and what else? Justice. So this is so powerful. But he said, I like, I just pulled out the part here. He said, I will harden you to difficulties. Yes, they're going to come. But I'm going to give you something that causes you to just walk right past it. 
See, saying we need we need to start embracing what God, what this so great salvation has given us. Part of it is to deal. Jesus is not pulling us out of here, beating me up. Jesus, He's not putting us. He putting the Iron Man suit on us. He putting the Iron Man suit on it, so so we can just start walking stuff and flicking stuff off. Like, okay, you know what? I'm strong, so let me help this brother here. Let me help this sister here. But I'm not losing my mind, and I'm not going crazy because stuff happening. He promised me, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, but I will harden you to difficulty, and then I'll uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness, my right hand of righteousness and justice. Everybody say justice, because that's what we want. We want justice for who? Everybody. 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 And God, the, I'm going to read your scripture later in a minute, but God, the Bible said God loves justice and he preserves his saints. So, so we're not just picking side, you know, I hope this happens. We don't hope that happens. We hope they get justice. We hope everybody gets justice. We're the body of Christ. We're different. <laughs> okay, another scripture, and then I'm going to start preaching. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. <laughs> well, yeah. Look at the screen because I'm going to just jump in the middle of it because the amplifier, you know, the, he got to amplify everything. But verse 5 said, for he God himself has said, I will not. See, I'm saying this because this is how we deal with, this is how we deal with pain. We don't need the, 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 the brownies for this. You know, the brownies, the brownies with little plants in them. I said, Pastor, I, oh, don't worry about it. For he said, for he God, okay, please, please, please calm down. For he God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Man, I don't care who you think left and walked out on you. God said, I ain't leaving. Watch this. He said, I will not. What did he say? I will not. What did he say? I will not. What did he say? I will not. Now, God said it three times. He's not hard of hearing. He wants you to get this. Not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake you, nor relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So how do we deal with pain? We got to stay with Jesus. I said, we got to stay with Jesus. We can't let the enemy create a tangible devil. It's them black folks over there. They the problem. It's them white folks over there. They the problem. It's them beige folks. They the problem. You're not my problem. I'm not your problem. And the believers, we can't talk like that, that they're the problem. We can make an observation, but I don't, you're not my issue. I got somebody that's more far, because see, once you're gone, then, then you, my issue's not gone. The one who instigated is still here. Yeah. But God is telling me, listen, I won't ever leave you without support, friend. I don't care who walks out on you. I don't care what happened to you. I will never, ever leave you without support. I got to get that down no matter what's happened in the world. Yes, I can get angry. Yes, I can get, but I'm not going to. See, how does the church react? We react. We don't let stuff steal our joy, and we don't get in fear. Say that again. We don't let, when we hear stuff, we don't let it steal our joy and we don't get in fear. This is how I can maintain my joy and keep from getting in fear because I know he's with me. I know he's with me. And he said, I'm never going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you without support. I'm going to harden you to difficulty. You can go through it. And then once you go through it, you can bring somebody with you. And then I'm never going to leave you. So whatever, whatever you could be afraid of is no longer an issue now because you got me. Now, so y'all good? Okay. Now, <laughs> now I want to talk about the church. Uh oh. (laughs) 
before you and I can heal the world, before we can heal the world, there needs to be some healing in the house. There needs to be some healing in the home. There needs to be some healing. I need some healing. I need, they need to be healing the home. They need to be some healing in the, before we go to the world. Don't get me wrong. Now, we've got we to go to the world. But we can't go to the world with the effectiveness. There need to be some healing in the home. My life. There need to be some healing in the church. There needs to be, you know, I'm going to talk about unity. I need, there needs to be unity. Before we start talk, telling the world we need unity, do we need some in the home? Yeah. <laughs> in the family? In the church. Now, now, it's amazing to me. Okay, let, let me say this. Now, I, I thought it was outstanding. There was a, a unity. I saw some of y'all on TV. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get y'all, Kevin, you right up there all loud. I saw you all loud. i like, Kevin, let the man talk. You're like, I'm on TV, all right. But anyway, I saw several of you, and, and I thought that was wonderful. I would have been out there. I just, got, I just got stung by a bee. I did. I, I was out there watering my flower, and I got stung by a bee right here. Thank you. And then I was getting ready for the service, so, so I couldn't go. And so, but I think it's good. I, I, I think it's good. It was unity. And I think we need to do those kind of things. That's part of it. That's part of it. And I think beyond that, some other stuff needs to happen. And I don't know, and, and some of it, some of it is, some, some of it is. But, but I'm talking mainly about the church, though. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this church. Because I, I, I go to this one. And then, and then the church at large. Because a lot of times what we call unity is not unity at all. And when we say we want unity, yeah, you, you want it with, with some restrictions. Let's read, let's read the scripture. Let me get you a get, get scripture. You don't think I'm making stuff up. Psalm 131 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to do what? Dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon descending upon the mountains of Zion. Now, for there, you can put the word for there, unity, that place. Unity is a place. For there, the Lord has commanded the blessing. There's a blessing. There's a commanded blessing in unity. I said there's a commanded blessing in unity. And, you know, even before we come here, you, you know, we, see, see, it's hard for me to unite and mesh with others if I haven't learned that at the house. Now, I wrote this down. Most of America pray for a move of God. But we need to be praying for a move of God's people. In a time of national disunity, God has called the church to model true unity. Wow. So, you know, united we stand divided, we fall. And like I said, the, the, the things we do and the things that's going on in the country is wonderful. But the thing that's going to produce results along with that, God put us here. And there's a, he said the commanded blessing, that's something to come on a place, a, a people that walk in divine unity. There's something about a person who takes themselves out of the center, self-centeredness, and pulls themselves out of being the center of attraction, and not just the center of attraction, but the center and the sum total of, it's all about me. It's something about, you know, it's something about people that can just pull themselves away from situations and, 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 and a thinking that, you know what, I'm going to do my thing no matter what they do anyway, and to, and to be critical, to be, um, um, I'm not concerned about that, that's not my issue. It is your issue. When we're in unity, it is your issue. Now, we don't all do the same thing. We, we all bring a different mix 
for the same benefit. You got it? You know, uni unity is not uniformity. We don't have to do everything the same. We don't do everything the same. And I would give an illustration. You have Brother Freed up here. You have uh, Sister, Sister Lynn up here. Well, they don't, they don't do everything the same. They're not robots. Okay, let's do like Ken Friendly. Up, up, Ken Friendly. Up, Ken Friendly. Ken Friendly. Ken Friendly. <laughs> they don't do it like me. But, they, but the impact is the same. Yeah. You listening to me? And so, but a lot of time, even in the church, the church, this church, church is like this. Church is competing against each other. We're all, we're all in the same game of keeping the devil under our feet. Same game. And so, and so, it's not about, see, you sitting back and acting like, well, you know, they're going to take care of it. No, God brought you here or wherever you at, at, wherever you are, to get in the mix. To get in the mix, to bring benefit outside of ourselves. We could, man, shoot. You, shoot. I, I was telling the first group this morning, you know, I, I had a, Sister, she she gone. She was in first service, and she 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 was like my ghetto, real ghetto sister. She had a ghetto ministry, a ministry to the ghetto women. I heard her give her testimony. I was like, oh Lord, she telling all that Jesus. But but it just shows show Jesus can clean somebody out. And so and I was telling her, see, there was a time in our church when when and I I know I know what it was, but there was a time in our church when. Man, we was, we was like one. Y'all remember that? Some of y'all old time? It was like we was like one. We would, we would support one another. We would celebrate one another. If you did it, God dog it, I'm looking good too. You know, I may not have a pot to piss in, a pen. <laughs> okay, act like y'all didn't hear that. And, and you know, but, but, but nobody was throwing down on somebody. They're like, baby, you need a ride? I'll tell you what, I'll be there at 5 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was just, it was so sweet, man. And, and things were popping up in here. <laughs> things were popping in the church. And, and folk were getting, I mean, miracles, all kinds of stuff was happening. And I trace it back to, there was a unity we had. Everybody, everybody was involved. Everybody. Everybody involved in, 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 in the vision. We're going to get back to that. Now, now we're going to thin some stuff out. Some of the folks don't want to do all that. We're going to ask them, you know, we're going to line up some cars and escalates out there. And we're going to put them in there and take them somewhere else. <laughs> no, we're going to clean it out. Because it doesn't, take, it doesn't take a whole lot of people. It just takes some folks. That says, let's do this. Amen. Whatever the flavor is. I remember when we talked to church, my wife said, you know what? She said, well, you know, she the boss of me. She said, you know, I don't want no, I don't want no all black church. And I said, well, shoot. Anyway, she said, um, <laughs> she said, heaven's not going to be like that. She said, we'll know it's God when he sends all kind of people. I say, yeah, I hope he sent some, so, yeah, some other one. Because to your people, they say something. Her people, not mine. <laughs> but there was a time, and it's got to get back, where we cared. Time when people cared, where, where convenience wasn't an issue. We was hot at the God. And I, and I kind of think I know, because we, I remember the Bernard. I remember we were y'all house. Y'all was living in a trailer. Yeah, some of y'all know, she big time, big time real estate broker and, and some board of credit union one and all that. But they used to live in a trailer. We went to their house and got some fried chicken. <laughs> that boy can cook some chicken. That boy can fry some chicken. But y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, see, we were all, Jennifer and Will, we was all coming up, wasn't we? We was all, I had old beat up Honda with hell damage. They had that big old Lincoln by long of this building. <laughs> they did. But, but, but we was 
was all, we was all, we was all coming up. Y'all remember that day? You remember? We was all coming up. And as long as we was all coming up, everybody was all right with that. But something happened. Some folks started smelling themselves and, 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 and getting jealous one way. I'm like, wait a minute. And, and so, and now there's a culture, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not, but, but, but it's time now. And I've been preaching this stuff for a while that we got to demonstrate, not just demonstrate, the kingdom of God is not in word only, but it's in what? Power. It's in power. We got to demonstrate this. The world's not going to run in here. They're not going to be chasing it down. They're like, okay, how do y'all do that? They're not going to do that when it's like it is. It's getting better, but it's, it's, got, to, it's got to change. Amen. And we got to hold each other accountable. Amen. Okay, I don't know if y'all ready for this. But, but we need to hold each other accountable. I see you disrespecting the scripture. I mean, John, that's not what the scripture says, bro. You're part of the body. You're affecting me. You make me work harder. I got to defend you and all this. I got to pray for you. I just want to praise God for you. I got to work. I got to work harder now. And, and we got this thing where, you know, it's about unity. You, we got we to gotta get it and then what? Maintain it. Yes. It takes work to maintain it. Your part, you, your part affects me. My part affects you. So we all don't do the same thing, but, but we got to mix. We, we, we get in the mix and we benefit. I was telling the people this morning and they said, well, you need to talk more about that because... You know, we uh, <laughs> like now we gotta change public policies, like the laws and stuff. Now we support ministries here in Alaska, that that that's their call. I'm not called to go down there, the Juno and stand. I went down there one time. It's boring. I ain't got time for that, and I don't even understand what they're saying. I'm sitting up there trying to act all smart. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a clue what they were saying. I'm not called to that, but we support y'all, we, us, we support a, a, a ministry here that that's all they do. They're called to that. So we're in the mix. We're, we're, we're uniting with them, supporting them and, and, and other churches, and they're able to do, they're able to affect public policy. We ain't got time to be reading through all that, them laws and bills and stuff. Just send me the summary. Tell me how to vote. Just tell me how to vote. I ain't even trying to read up all of them, but tell me who to vote for. Because they, they spend all day doing that. So when we support them, we, we, we're, 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 we're in unity with them. I'm, that's, we're not called to do that. Um, we have a brother here, Tom. He, he sits on the board of, uh, well, he's in first service. He sits on the board of uh, the one to feed the people downtown. Well, we support them. I don't have, I, we don't have a pantry, we don't have a bunch of food, you know, we got rats around here. And so, we can't be putting all that food in here, and rats come in here and eat it up. Don't say that. No, we don't have rats. We don't have them in our building. In the neighborhood. We don't, we don't, they're in the neighborhood. But here's my point, my point is, my point is, we don't, we don't have, we don't have a, 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 we don't have people cooking, serving, and, and ministering to people, but, but we are cooking, serving, ministering to people. When I stop at the light and they say, can I get a cup? Soup kitchen. Soup kitchen. You can eat there because of us. We, we were involved with a ministry that was rescuing girls out of uh, sex slavery. Well, I ain't going over there. I ain't going over there. You going? You ain't going either. <laughs> Cause nobody let Pastor where, where that at. No, ain't nobody asking for that. Cause you will get your head cut off. You mess with them, them dudes, girls. They mess their money. But there's somebody God called. I said hallelujah. There's people God called to do that. And they go in there, and man, they got they fly. Then they got to get on the back of a truck and, and ride all night. And they got some dudes with, with guns and machetes. Man, I ain't got time for that. And so, but they go and rescue them girls. And guess what? Amen. Guess how they're able to do it? 
your money, and that's what they would say. You need to tell us more about that. Y'all, when you give it, we doing that. So my point is, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Unity. I don't have to do it like you do it. But I need to do something. Like, well, Finley, what you doing? What you doing for the community? A lot. Well, I don't see you. I, I ain't got time for that. I got somebody else. Like, okay, like all the people that was out there yesterday. Y'all were represented. I was trying to get this beach thing off my head. <laughs> y'all was, y'all did, y'all, y'all was fine. I saw y'all, I saw, ah, look at that. go Jennifer, they go Lynn, they go Kevin. I saw y'all. Them my people. I'm trying to get rid of this because I had to preach it. The thing, I can't be coming here, this memorial serve a big old knot on my head. I'm like, oh, Lord, I can't let this happen. So God was gracious. It was there a little bit. It went down. Oh, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> Y'all funny. But we got to hold each other accountable. Why are you in my business? I ain't in your business. I'm trying to hold you accountable. I want you to hold me accountable. Now, we're going to have, okay, in August, the last week of August, I'm, we're going to give a pretty announcement and all of that. We're going to have a, we're going to have a three day, y'all remember how we used to do? I got this guy coming. He, he's in Argentina now. He, he, he's up, he's, I want to expose you to the prophet, prophet ministry. And when we, I teach, I'm a teacher, but I try to do a little prophet stuff. But he's a, pro, he's a real prophet. He called, he, he stood up in Orlando and told him, y'all get ready to have, he, he called that, that massacre, and, and he said the wrong words, though. They said, well, how did you know that was going to happen? He said, I got inside information. Well, they had him sitting down at the... <laughs> <laughs> they had him sitting down there at the office, that little room. <laughs> Tell us about this inside information. No, God, man, God. <laughs> That's the truth. That's what he told me. So he, he come. I mean, he ministers the whole, the, I mean, when he goes, the, 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 the governor, the police chief, the mayor, all of them come. And it's a, it's a miraculous, miraculous. So the last week of August, and, I'm, you know, I'm going to challenge you to come out here every night, three nights. We need to do this five, six nights. And I quit challenging y'all. I did. I'm, I'm not, no day's over. Like I said, we may clean it out a little bit, but that's okay. That the one that, that, that's going to lock in, it's a, whole, it's a whole new day. There's some, I, I already know God is releasing some stuff. I, I'm not just talking either. I just know, it. I've been knowing this for a while, but I didn't, because I'm like, okay, what, what, what? You just know something, kind of like washing your feet with your socks on? You know, you're like, I know something is going on, something's supposed to happen, but I can't get to my toes. <laughs> well, we get to our toes. And we're going to come out here every night. And it, that, that's just going to be the start. Deb already got some stuff she can already do. And, and because we need to challenge. We need to get out of this convenient Christianity. Yeah. We got folks around us dying. And like T.D. J. said, you know, okay, this stuff coming to our front door now. Yeah. Our churches, our families. No. So we're going we're gonna to get back on this thing, man. I mean, you know, and we, like I said, we, we, we do, we, I'm, man, I love God. I ain't trying to do nothing. Well, how come you, you know, I'm doing it. We're doing it. But just because I don't do it like you, don't mean I'm better than you or you're better than me. You got to do it, you know, and God wants an authentic, organic move of God's people. We're not manipulating. We're not going to manipulate you. You're not going to manipulate us. We're going to do what God called us to do. Amen. But we got to hold each other accountable. Amen. What do you mean by that? It's speaking into each other's life. Like, like, okay, okay, listen, listen, you know, you know, <laughs> I get held accountable. But, but you know, what? it's stuff like, um, why are you speaking to them like that? That's not the love of God. Oh, you go to, go to, go to. So, so, mom, so do you, do you pray for pastor? Yeah. Okay. 
I need to find somebody that don't pray so they can answer. <laughs> no. How many of y'all want me praying for you? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You want me chatting. You want me to pray too. You don't want me to be, right, Lord. Remember, remember them. You don't want me praying like that. You want me sweating, spitting all over the place. You want me throwing down, tearing up shut. That's how you want me to pray. How you pray for me? That's unity. How you pray for Eloisa's kids? Do you pray for her like you pray for your own? Well, she got, she got, you know, she that ain't none of your business. I'm sorry, I just you line of sight. Yeah, you, so. Let's let's pick on Kevin. No, and none of us are doing it all right. But I don't even want to talk about that. Well, I want to talk about it. We we need because see, y'all remember that, that message I did about the geese. They fly like 70% further when they're all in formation. That's right. We can do more. We don't have to, you know, we, again, we don't do it all. We don't say it the same way. We don't do it the same way. You know, I don't preach like other preachers. I, I, don't, I preach like me. I do it like me. And God picked me with me like me is. I talk like me too. I talk like me. I talk like that. But that's all right because y'all okay. But my point is, you know, there's no, we don't compare one another. There's no comparison. We don't compare churches. Listen, we're all, we're all in the same game. And however God chose you to do it, me to do it, that's how we do it. So I'm, I'm going to encourage you. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you. No, I said we don't feed the hungry. We do. We don't rescue a girl. I remember one time, though, I went and got a girl off the street. That when they used to, you remember that? I said, I said, honey, I'm going to get this girl off the street. I'm going to get this girl off the street. I'm going to get this girl off the street. So in case somebody see my car with my Obey God plates on it, <laughs> you'll know I'm telling you ahead of time. That's when I ain't have a whole lot of sense. I, I probably wouldn't do that now. I'd probably send free down there. <laughs> I said free. Because y'all, y'all, they, they already tried to talk about me, so I like free, you go ahead. You 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 knew what all this. <laughs> you need some you need some experience. <laughs> ah, yeah, I like man, they already talk about me. I I can't I I'm I'm done. But <laughs> But yeah, so I went down there, and, and, and the girl was, you know, doing the thing. I right, girl, baby, come on. Get in the car. I pulled up there. I had that big old black Lexus then. I pulled up there. Hey! <laughs> and people are looking. <laughs> but I had, I, had, I, had, I had called her dad, and she got in the car. And she'd been off the streets ever since. Yeah. Well... But my point is, we don't have a get them off the street ministry, but we do. Now, the, last, the second time I was a little more discreet because we had a brother. We had to get him out of that, uh, that uh, what's that place down there on International? Bush Company. Huh? Bush Company, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. But she put that right out there, didn't she? Okay, let me wrap this up. But here's what I wanted to say. Here's what I wanted to say. There's some, there's some giftings I wish I had. Because I, like, I think they're kind of cool. But you know, you don't just get the gift because you think it's cool. God gives them. But I know without a shadow of a doubt why I'm on this planet. And I'm not going to deviate from it. I've dedicated the rest of my life. I know how to teach anybody that will listen. How to walk with God and demonstrate. Not just the Lord in my heart. I'm talking about demonstrate. In this word where the word can make a positive difference in your everyday life. 
That's what I'm called to do. So that's why I ain't going to be out there doing a whole bunch of stuff. Because I'm, and, and to do that, you, you got to be in this book a lot. You would not even imagine the hours. You know, I'm not trying to impress you, but this is what I do. This is what I do. So, so, so I got to stay focused, and this is, this is my part. This is my lane. Now, we're, when we cross the finish line, we can hold hands. But I can't step over here. And I'm not going to let you step over here if you ain't supposed to be over here. But one thing we can do, every one of us, everybody in here, if you're a believer, I'm going to ask you to crank up. Get out of the convenient thing. Get out of this, you know, these sound bite things. Get in this word. Study this word. Spend time with this word until this word starts spending you. Man, forfeit. Release some other stuff. You, so, you, you can quote everybody on social media. Quote Jesus. Because with, I'm telling you, the time we live, all of that, I'm not against it, but I'm just saying, get Jesus. And grow, grow. I mean, if I, if, if I asked you, can you say, have you grown in the last six months? You got to ask yourself that. And ask somebody close to you that you don't mind hearing the truth. The people you hang with, listen, the people you hang with, make sure you hold them accountable. Amen. You know, you've been complaining about this for, for the last six years. Take your thumb out your mouth and grow up. That's what Pastor told me to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you put it on me. That's okay. I'm good. But I'm, I'm, this is what my heart was. I mean, I'm processing all of this the last few days. I'm like, man, we got to, we got to, we got to, we got to leave here. In other words, leave here, the place where we are. Because I'm telling you, this is our finest hour, saints. This is the church's finest hour. Light shines brighter the darker it gets. And I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to be afraid of, of attacking. <laughs> attacking. We're not passing. We're attacking. And everything you see that is not the will of God, you take it out. I got some, I got some militancy back there. Yeah, you take it out. Anything that's slowing down your progress, anything that's tearing your heart apart, anything that's destroying your family, man, pain, whatever it is, you take it out. God is giving you everything you need to take it out. Now I'm going to be the captain of this ship. Now you can, you know. I'm looking for a few good rascals. <laughs> and I need some that like, you know, don't let your mind get in the way of the Bible. I said something there, didn't I? Yeah. I heard you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes we let our, our mind get in the way of the scripture, and then we, we call the scripture to be just, just another whatever. So we're, we're on the way. Now, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to get out your way. That's how your, that's how your dad said, oh, I'm going to get out the way. Bishop, that's Bishop talk. Um, okay. I'm going to say this then we're going to be done so I want you to relax <laughs> okay one of the things that hinders unity you know and I'm, I'm getting my swag back too I'm getting my swag back a lot of stuff I just like okay, I ain't going to fool with y'all about all this but I'm getting that back now because <laughs> me not fooling with y'all about it <laughs> sometimes you just need somebody to talk to you um, but, uh, and, and I had a discussion with, with somebody about this. I mentioned the first service how, remember I was talking about how we, man, that unity was flowing. And, and many of you here, there's a lot of you, 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 you don't know about it, at least not here, maybe where you were. But, and I look at it like, wow, what was that? And so sometimes though, and I said we were all coming up at the same time. We were all hungry, man. We were just hungry. But one of the things you have to guard against, is, is sometimes where you've had a voice in the past 
that door has been closed and you don't have a voice there no more. Les Brown told me, he said, don't try to speak where you've not been given a voice. In other words, there's people, they ain't trying to hear you. So don't be trying to, don't be trying to speak into their life. They ain't trying to hear you. So, so what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that sometimes one of the big things you have to guard against is familiarity. Where I had a voice, and you can hear the voice so much that all of a sudden, well, he ain't, you know, he ain't as anointed as he used to be. Okay. Well, what happened? Did Jesus change? Did Jesus? So, so, yeah, and, and that's some of you in here now. The other time, you used to, you used to listen, and you, you didn't listen so you can just say, I was there. You would listen so I can take this and run with it. Yeah. But, and it's human nature. The voice gets so familiar. Like, ah, I, well, that's, my, that's, my, that's my dog. I thought I'd say something else. That's my, that's my pastor. <laughs> I thought I'd say something else. But, but I, I got to get my swag back all the way back before I say that. Some of y'all know, okay. But no, but see, you can get so familiar that you're like, it's not effective. And then, now, now watch this. Here's how it works. Then you start noticing all my flaws. Them flaws been there the whole time. But now, since you don't have, I don't have a voice, you know, I don't know why he always got to, I don't know why he always got to, you know, talk about this and mention this and, you know, he don't be saying them words right. You didn't have no problem with them words that wasn't right before. But what's happened? There's no, there's no voice anymore. You know, I, you know, I think I'm a, that's why people, that's why a lot of times people leave churches. It's not because in effect it's like, I don't, I don't have a voice. I'm not saying, some, some people need to go, but then sometimes people are like, well, you know, I just don't, I just, I don't get fed no more. Well, all these folks getting fed? What are you eating? <laughs> no, really. And it's really not an indictment on me. I don't feel bad because I know, I know what I put into bringing you the word. So it's got to be the eating. The eater. And so you, you have to ask yourself the question. And not just me. It happens with parents. Your kid gets so familiar with you, you don't even have a voice anymore. And then they go talk to somebody 18 and been on the earth 18 years. 18 years, they don't be here but a minute, and they're trying to listen to them. Or they go to college. You ever have one go to college and come back? Lord Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's like. They're boys. And so what you got to do, what you got to do, what I got to do is make sure um, the pulse is checked to where, it, and if I you know, I'll be like, I, I've asked people, I said, you know, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go Amen. to another church. Some of y'all here, y'all come and see. I'm going to see if he's going to talk about. <laughs> I'm getting my way back in. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's okay. You ever get the point? Your kid want, husband want to listen. We had a remarkable testimony the other day. Remarkable, remarkable testimony. I mean, it, this is one for the ages. And, and Deb, Deb had ministered to somebody, and Deb said, listen, don't ever call me again in life. What kind of pastor wife is that? A good one. Because this honey wasn't, I mean, this, she, wasn't, she wasn't hearing nothing. She was wrong with two left shoes. And Deb said, don't even call me no more. Don't call me no more. Lose my number. A year and a half later, I said, Deb, you were right about everything. You were right about everything. You were right about everything. I was destroying my marriage. I was driving my husband crazy. He about to leave me. Man, you said everything. Well, what happened? The light came on. And, but, you know, and I thought it was awesome that she would come back. Like the woman issued blood and told us the whole story. It was remarkable. We don't give up on people. We let them disqualify themselves. Amen. I love everybody. In here. I'm trying to go to heaven. Yeah. I want to go there. I don't want to go there. I want to go there when I'm supposed to go. 
but I'm also. No, you can go there quick. You get bitter, and you can't, especially in this position, and you, you abuse God's people. And you just, man, shoot, I ain't trying to do nothing wrong. And, and what happens is you, 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 you do that, and there's a, there's a, it's not a curse, but you open yourself up to stuff that you shouldn't have to deal with. But your credit, she came back, and I mean, it was, it's just beautiful. We ain't, trying, we ain't trying to cut nobody out of nothing. But I want you to get that attitude. Get along with folks. Quit being mean to people. Amen. Quit being, quit, quit being, what's that word I'm looking for? Hypo, hypo, some hypocrite. Yeah, thank you. You know, I got, they gave me, I got a birthday cake yesterday, and, and it's my favorite cake, my favorite cake. And I said, I got that thing on my mind. I'm about to shut this joker down here in a minute. <laughs> and, um. I was going to eat something yesterday, but I'm like, I said, no, I'll be, I won't be no good. I won't be able to study because I haven't had, I haven't, you know, for, for six months, I put myself on this restriction. Can't y'all tell? <laughs> I put myself on this restriction. So, so I got a cake and, and uh, Tamara from Dessert First. If you haven't had dessert there, I'm putting a plug in there. Go get some dessert over there. Yeah. You tell her I sent you. I need, I said, give me some extra cake. <laughs> and, um, and so... So my birthday yesterday, so, so Deb, Deb surprised me with this cake. It's a whole cake, right? I'm going to go home and destroy that thing. I'm going to go home and destroy it. And I'm going to get a sugar, I'm going to get a sugar rush. Then I'm going to crash. Then I got to get on the plane. But I'm going to take some on the plane, too. I'm going to freeze some, take it on the plane. By the time I got to go all the way to D.C., by the time I get there, it'll be thawed out. I ain't giving no, I don't care who's sitting next to me. They better not even look at none of my cake. I'm going to destroy it. I ain't got nothing to do till Tuesday. I gotta, no, I got to meet tomorrow. I got to meet tomorrow. So I can't. I don't want to be in there falling asleep. But I love y'all. We love you so very much. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. And, and I want you. And my pray, I'm, pray, I'm praying that God will revive us again. And not just so we can have a good church. Oh, we got a good church. But so that lives can be impacted. And, so, and when you're impacting life, you're much happier too. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this awesome time to get together today. And I thank you. Thank you for that cake. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to stop. Father, I believe that the winds of change, the winds of power, the winds of the winds of flowing and walking with you are blowing in a way that cannot be explained. We don't like what happened, but we're going to use this energy and anger and direct it toward the one who is behind everything. We continue to pray for the families of all the victims, all of them. And we pray that your peace and your wholeness and, and for those that don't know you, that they, that they would come into the knowledge of the truth of the Son of God, the, the family members and those who, the perpetrators, the ones who, who inflicted pain and hurt and even, even death. We pray for them. We pray for divine justice. You love justice and you hate when people take stuff from people like lives and anything else. Lord, we thank you now. And Father, I pray for the people here that heard me today. That they would stand perfect and complete in all the will of God for their lives. And that they would stay in their lane and give their supply so that we all can flow together. Help us respect one another. Help us celebrate one another. Help us hold each other accountable. I pray that the accountability spirit hit the church like never before. Father, I know what you've done in the past. <laughs> and you don't give us dessert first, so that the latter shall be better than the former. Thank you, Lord. Now I pray for people that they heard all of this and they said, man, how can I get in on it? If you're here today, and you're not born again, you can't walk in the, the power and the authority 
and the, uh, the, the, the freedom that I just talked about. You can't walk in that now, but Jesus brings it all to you. I want you to make a decision today. I want you to make two decisions. A, if you're, well, three, well, two. If you're not born again, receive him. Receive the gifts of salvation. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're not, if you're born again, but you've not been filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so that you can pray more efficiently and more effectively. God has taken away toil from us. We don't have to toil. And actually, our labor is to enter into his rest of all he's, what he's already done and just receive from him. And then if you're here, if you're not sure, I haven't done this, but you need to find the place that God has you. If you believe this is the place where you feel in your heart, you have a witness in your heart that you need to be a part of this church, I want you to make that decision today. If you have a witness in your heart that you don't think you are, I want to encourage you to find the place, find your place, find your place and plug in there and be a blessing. If this is your place, plug in and be a blessing. Make sure you speak to somebody every time. You don't know what your words, how the impact of your words to their lives. We're raising up a new standard here. Father, I thank you that you're in the midst of it. So, Father, whoever needs to make those decisions, I pray that it's done now. In Jesus' name, I release the peace over them to do just that. Now, we're going to pray, and then we're going to go. If you're here, you say, Pastor, I need to make a decision with my life. One of those decisions, all of those decisions, and I'm ready to move forward. This is my last, listen, this is my last day of playing games with my life. I need some precision. I need some, I need some direction. I need some stability. I want to do that now. If I'm talking to you, I want to pray with you, for you, and I want you I want you to help all of us. Help all of us. Take authority. Listen, we live here. We're going to take not only authority in our life, we're going to take authority in this city. And we're going to join with other men and women of God. And take authority here. It's a spiritual issue. But we can, man, if we all did what God called us to do, we can put the right people in the offices and take the wrong ones out. We can do that. Unity does that kind of stuff. Hallelujah. All right. Is there anybody here this morning? You say, Pastor, I need to turn my life around. I'm ready to do it. I don't need to make a decision. Would you raise your hand if you are amongst 